So what I wanted to talk about today is this latest uh, school shooting, as tragic as, as it is, there's something that the media, the mainstream media, if you will, not the secondary or the um, alternative media, has left out of the narrative of this tragic event. <clears throat> so it took me... Okay, let me back it up. So this morning, it's been a couple days since it happened, and I didn't really want to say anything because, you know, you know how the media, the mainstream media goes out and puts out a narrative immediately, and so it's kind of hard to, you know, break away from it. But what I wanted to know now is what really happened. Well, we already know what happened. I mean, two people went in there, like apparently uh, two students, and shot up school. One person was killed. I think eight people were wounded or something like that. But going more, it was like, why did they do this? What were their motivations? Who were these p kids? Or one, I think one was an 18-year-old. So it took somebody such as Paul Joseph Watson and a uh, guy from the Red Ele Elephants, uh, Vincent James, to lend sort of what really happened and who are these people. Well, Vincent, he did a uh, he did a video on why the news media sort of wants to quietly back away from this story. Well, apparently one of the suspects, the second suspect, one of the suspects was uh, a transgendered male, meaning that this person was a female now is transitioning to male. You would think that'd be kind of important, right? Well, it would be important if there was no bias in the reporting. But since there is bias in the reporting, so when I went on Twitter, I found out Paul Dussault put it this uh, uh, alternative media source called Information Liberation. I don't know how 100% correct they are, but it, um, uh, they were reporting that uh, Devin Erickson, 18-year-old high school student who has worked with youth, youth actor in Colorado was identified by authorities as one of the two shooters accused of wounding nine students in the K-12 through STEM school located in Douglas County. One of the students, 18-year-old... I'm just going to go to the next... 18-year-old uh, Kendrick Castillo, was, who was the, one of the heroes that stopped the shooter, died heroically in an attack after confronting the, one of the shooters. In court for the first time on May 8th, Erickson bowed his head in purple hair. you got to see this guy. Girl, whatever you want. I don't know. Don't have no clue. His purple hair dangling in front of his face was facing more than a dozen charges. He took, shook his head and answered some of the judge's questions. At one point, he answered no when asked whether he had questions. The second accused shooter has now been identified as Alec McKinney. You can read this. Read about Alec here. Okay. Alec identified his court records as Maya McKinney, but a Denver television station reports that McKinney is transgendered and transitioning to male. The second suspect uses the name Alec McKinney on social media. So heavy, so heavy. I guess the the or this publication is reporting from is using the name the Denver Post confirmed. Uh, <clears throat> the judge did not allow video or photos of McKinney during court hearing. Court hearing. Noel Phillips of the Denver Post reported that McKinney, that McKinney's lawyer said McKinney goes by the name Alec and uses the pronoun he. But here's where it gets interesting. Because let's say this was an abortion clinic that was shot up and it was done by some radical Christian, who evil, radical, right wing Christian. You know what the narrative would be, right? So on social media, Devin Eric is an registered Democrat, expressed hatred for some Christians and shared post criticizing Donald Trump and praising Barack Obama, which he can see later in this article. Quote You know what I hate? All these Christians who hate gays, yet in the Bible it says Deuteronomy 7, 12, 2, 13. If someone doesn't do what their priest tells them to do, they're supposed to die. It has plenty of crazy stuff like that, he wrote on Facebook a couple years ago. But they all get out of it, it is, they, but what all they get out of it is, you gays. In 2015, Erickson put on a celebrate, put a celebrate pride filter on to Facebook picture. It says, when are we going to get these congressional hearings on the rise of threats of radical leftism? Okay. 
you know where this this publication is leaning towards to but that's that's the point I think I'm trying to make here it took me I was watching Good Morning America this morning they made zero mention of this of these two people and their political leanings not one Whoop. pants warm but it took someone from like YouTube and Twitter such as uh where I got this from, uh, Paul Joseph Watson on Twitter and Vincent James on YouTube. So my question is, why? You would think that this would be sort of important to broadcast, to inform the public on. But since it's from the left side of the political spectrum, the mainstream media, silencio, silent, silence, there's nothing. Why? Narrative. There's a narrative that obviously they want to push. And this is exactly what they're pushing. Keyword being narrative. Now, not all narratives are bad. However, in this particular instance, I looked up at the BBC and I took down what they said. And I, I did the keyword trans and it says uh, and it, pretty much at the end of the article, it basically says, what is known about the suspects? Police m- initially misidentified the younger one, a juvenile not named by police as male. We originally thought the juvenile quote was a male by appearance. Sheriff Spurlock said he declined to comment in local media reports. that The suspect is transgendered and transitioning from female to male. The other suspect, a suspect identified as police, 18 year old Devin Erickson. He made the first court appearance on Wednesday facing one, Count of first-degree murder and 29 of attempted first-degree murder. The defendant hung his head as he sat between the two two lawyers. All right. Next, we'll go to the AP. Almost at the very end of the article, right near the comment section, Spurlock declined to comment if anybody asked about reports of juvenile juvenile suspect is transgendered. KMGH TV reported late Tuesday the juvenile suspect is a transgendered male in the process of transitioning from male to female. Television station cited anonymous sources close to the investigation. Okay, that's the Washington Post. Uh, okay. Uh, I think here's the AP, same thing. Here's what's interesting. The Daily Caller, which is not necessarily left. It's more of a center-right leaning. Or you can say, if you say far-right, stop it. <clears throat> the whole now if you notice that the, the creation of these articles they, they basically say hey Colorado shooting blah 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 okay Daily Caller states that report Colorado shooting suspects motivated by revenge and anger one suspect transgender uh, the motive of Colorado suspect went beyond bullying involved in revenge and anger towards others at school sources close to the investigation told the Denver Channel the shooting resulted in one death with eight other students wounded at least one of the suspects has been in therapy and illegally used drugs. The channel also reported one of the suspects, Devin Erickson, is an adult, while the other unnamed suspect is a minor. I think that's the whole point of this: is that the news media didn't think this was an important couple of different facts to report. They said this was a school shooting. Okay, why did they do it? Oh, we don't know. Okay, that's fair enough. But it's been a couple of days. You sh- you didn't get any scoops. Nope, no scoops. Really, no scoops. Why? How did the Daily Caller get this? How did the Daily Caller reporter Mary Margaret Olahan get it? I think the point is is that they're pushing a narrative that they're trying to state that transgender people aren't violent. And granted, not everyone is violent. Not a certain group more. Maybe one group is more violent than the other, which is absolutely true. But in this certain position in case, it seems to me that the media are trying to blot this out or put it the, put it at the end of the article where most of the people, when you, most when most people read articles, they only read a few the first two paragraphs and they're oh, okay, they got the gist of it, gist of it, and go on somewhere else. So it took me finding out from PJW. And uh, Senior Red Elephant to 
push me on the food to push me to find out what else is going on. And here's what I found out. The one of the suspects, according to some of these articles and what I've researched, is a transitioning female to male. Okay? And the other one is an 18-year-old. And in the state of Colorado, you cannot get a handgun until you're the age of 21. Again, that begs more questions. How do they get it? Did they get it from home? Did they steal it? Did they buy it in Idaho? I don't know. But the fact remains is that they were some one of these guys were in therapy. One at least one of the suspects, according to the Daily Caller, were in therapy and illegally using drugs with a firearm, which adds on to the felonies that are already present in this case. So, if you just listen to Good Morning America. You basically would have only understood the fact that the suspects were just kids. Interesting. When you do a little bit of research, you find out what really is going on. Instead of just listening to the mainstream media and their biased narratives. So there you go. In this case, don't keep your head down. Keep your head up and keep it on a swivel. Because if you don't, you're just going to live and die by what the media tells you and what doesn't tell you. 